cube does converge. This is like the sequence, you know, series summations that you did in the elementary calculus, and it's kind of coming back to haunt you. Um, so if r is greater than one, then essentially the infinite area, the area under the infinite curve, is still finite. Okay. Now for the normal distribution too, this thing just keeps going on and on. It never becomes zero, and yet we know that under the normal distribution curve, the area is finite. Right? The area is finite because it falls fast enough that it never adds up to infinity. Okay? 1 by k does not fall fast enough. 1 by k square will fall fast enough. Okay? That it will become finite. Now, if you have a finite area underneath this, then if you ask yourself, if you were to, for example, take this curve and redraw this curve from, let's say, starting from a onwards, the curve again looks like that. Okay? That's why it's called self-similar. So if you take any small part of this curve and you just zoom on that, it again looks like that. Okay? Another idea, another way of looking at it is that the area from A to infinity, area under the curve from A to infinity, and area under the curve from B to infinity, is basically only dependent on the ratio of B and A. It's B to B by A power minus. That is a far greater than yeah, if, yes, if it comes back about infinite, then R is zero. And in general, this is also not surprising. A movement of order M exists only if R is greater than M plus 1. If R equal to 1, then you don't even have movement 1. That means average doesn't exist, which is not surprising because harmonic series has no average. Okay? So these are interesting facts about power loss. And then these were... Uh, and then in fact, the reason it's called scale-free essentially is that if you were to look at the, you know, the distribution from here on, it again looks like that. And also the area is basically doesn't depend on where you are, it only depends on the ratio between A and B. You notice that this guy is not like that. You see what I'm saying? If you were to look at normal distribution starting from here to infinity, it doesn't at all look like normal distribution because normal distribution is supposed to have a bump. There is no bump. Okay? Whereas this one, you know, if you start from A, A would be the biggest guy and then it falls polynomially down. Okay? Fine. Um, and then the other interesting so thing is a movement is a, it's basically mean, variance, etc. These are called movements of it. So you said that R is, since R was for, when there was R was somewhat fixed, we do not want to Yeah, it's more than... On these curves, they seem R is different. No, we'll, I'll give you the numbers in a minute. First of all, again, these are empirical, and it depends on how big a network did you play with. The important thing for you is not so much what is the exact value of R, at least for this class, but whether it is a straight line at all. If it's a straight line of any slope at all, then you know it's a power law distribution. Yes? That's very much more interesting to us. If you somehow want to use R to do something, then you care about the actual R value. And that depends on, because it's an empirical number right now, you know, it depends on how big a network people crawled and you know, plotted the degree distribution. Okay. Now, so these are the power law distributions and we saw them and the interesting question is how will you distribute, how would you generate these graphs? Give me a local procedure that each individual node can be following such that the emergent overall network would be following power law distribution. I already gave you a local procedure that an individual element, individual node can be following such that the emergent network would be uniform random network. Right? Because essentially for each person, you just decide the probability of having the link with them by just passing a kind independently. The interesting question is, what you will see is sort of, I think, kind of one of these people in the class was sort of pointing out that we don't make friends randomly, but it's not that we make friends deterministically either. What we mean by saying we don't make friends randomly is that we don't make friends uniformly randomly. Okay? I would not have the same probability of becoming a friend with him as I would have with him as I would have with a faculty member in CS department. 
they're different probability numbers. And furthermore, if you're a high school kid, then the probability that you would like to be friends with somebody depends not on just whether or not they're nice, but most high school kids or most junior high kids would like to become part of the popular clique. So if you're already popular, you know, I want to be your friend so that I'll be the popular clique. Okay, what that means is the probability that I will have an edge to a node depends, is different from different nodes. And it depends on the state of that node already. That seems to be our intuition. Okay, and one of the interesting things, um, one of the interesting things is uh, that you can actually, if you were to do this as a local model, you can show that the emergent network will have a power law distribution. Now this doesn't mean that that's how we actually generate networks. All we are saying is this could be an explanation. Whereas these local nodes were generate, deciding their edges to each node by tossing a, a coin, then you will never get a power law distribution. Whereas if you know you each node essentially the, the probability that you would have an edge with a node, let's say, is proportional, is proportional to the number of edges that already are there to that node, which is sort of popularity. If you just do that, then rich get richer. Popular people get more popular. I always wondered what, you know, chicken and egg problem of the CNN top news are, you, you know, and the most popular articles are New York Times most popular articles. Are you reading the article because you wanted to read it or because other people said it's already most popular so you want to be reading the most popular network articles? It's a hard thing to answer. Okay? In general, the probability that you read an article depends on how many links are already pointed to that article. Okay? Which, if you just do that locally, if each node does that locally, then you can prove that the overall degree distribution would obey power of distribution. And that would not it would be scale free. Power law is scale free. Scale free by scale free. Just come back to the that you have authority and hub right? No, no, no. Scale free has nothing. See, the authority hub path is will be there if you have directed edges. But power law networks will work whether you have directed or non-directed edges. So scale free, long tail, scale free, power law, they're all one and the same. Go back to that figure where you had those two graphs. Yeah. No, no, no. The point is these two networks have directed edges. I can generate two examples of random and scale-free networks which have undirected edges. If you have directed edges, you can talk about authorities hubs. If you have undirected edges, you can talk about rich nodes and non-rich nodes. The only point we are making is in a power law world, there will be enough number of rich people enough number of rich people, okay, that you need like a separate tax law for them and a separate, you know, health insurance for them, for example. Okay? If on the other hand you are living in a uniform random network, the probability of Bill Gates being there is like much, much lower. Okay, and so all of us would be sort of, then the socialism, the, you know, when you call somebody socialist in US, that's like saying worse things than, I'm mean, saying worse things than calling their mother's names, right? And it turns out socialism would be normal if in fact the world was uniform random. In fact, this power law networks actually were originally seen by Walfred, uh, Walfredo Perito. Perito is also known for Perito optimality. Okay, but Perito essentially pointed, he looked at the distribution of rich people in the world and found that rich people seem to be getting richer, essentially. Which is not surprising because, you know, except for uh, Warren Buffett, who actually said a great thing, who basically said a rich person should leave to his children enough money that they can do anything and make a living, but not enough money that they can do nothing and make a living. That's why he gave away most of his money. So that after him, again, he's trying to make the world non power law. But most of us, you know, keep the money and give it to our 
ungrateful children like you guys, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, richness becomes cluster. Okay, um, let's go. Okay, so that the point I was making before I got uh, uh, the question is, you could do one model for generating power class, which is essentially add edges, the probability of adding an edge to a node is proportional to the number of edges it already has. Now obviously in the beginning if you start with a zero uh, edge node, then the first guy who becomes popular gets to become more and more and more popular, which is exactly how the society is sum of entry one. The other alternative which also leads to power law distribution and which is of interest to web pages is if you were to make your friends by looking at somebody copying their friends and keeping some of them as your friends and adding a few more new friends which is sort of what you would do if I copy his web page, remove some of the links, keep some of the links and add new links. If I do the copy model, then again I will get a power law distribution. So here are two generative explanations of how power laws can happen. It's not that everybody is doing exactly this or this, but these do look more plausible than just tossing a coin to decide whether or not you will put a link to a page. In particular, in the beginning of the web starting, people used to not know how to set up a HTML page. They'll copy somebody's HTML page and they'll just keep you know, having this stuff. In fact, my wife was saying that when she was writing this PhD dissertation, you know, many of you will write dissertations, and one of the painful things that we've seen in the last minute is each graduate school has its own specific LaTeX style file. And you need to properly arrange it such that everything works well. And once a student does that, other students will then copy. Okay, and a friend of ours once told her apparently after a long time, that I suddenly found after I wrote my thesis that I was thanking your advisor because I forgot to remove the acknowledgements. <laughs> 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 it's a copy model. Okay? So anyway, interestingly, those things which are actually plausible things we do will get us to power law distributions. Next class when we come back, we will talk about first of all the point that small world phenomena also exist in power law networks. So which is good. Okay? And the second, we will talk about attacks versus dis dis disruptions in scale-free versus uniform random networks. And I point out that for random disruptions, random disruptions, uniform networks are bad, power law networks are better, because it's very low chance that random disruption will bring Google down. Okay, whereas an attack will never attack your page and my page, they will attack Google's page. So attacks are actually, will make power law networks much more susceptible. So military networks have to, who want to, you know, keep 24-7, need to take that into account and somehow increase, reduce the probability of it. We'll talk about this, and then talk about Sisla, and then move on.